welcome back students we have been studying about the magnetic field set up by different current carrying conductors and following the same thing today we will be studying about solenoid in our previous sec sessions we have discussed about the field set up by a straight current carrying conductor and a circular current carrying conductor we had seen that whenever current flows through this conductors a magnetic field is created the direction of which can be easily determined using maxwell's right hand thumb rule in case of a circular current carrying conductor i had told you that if we replace the single wire loop with a loop comprising of several turns of wire then a much stronger field is going to be created so that exactly what a solenoid is a solenoid is a coil comprising of several turns of wire and it creates a very strong magnetic field when current is flowing through it so today our class will be totally dedicated to the study of magnetic field created by a current carrying solenoid what are the factors on which the field strength depends and to what practical use it can be put to the very basic question arises what is a solenoid you can refer to the picture for this purpose just look into the shape can you identify any other object which closely resembles that of a solenoid doesn't it look like a spring which is commonly available in our houses the shape is actually given the name of a helix it is referred to a helical shape so a solenoid is actually a coil made up of copper wire so it comprises of several turns of copper wire a coil of copper wire which is used to generate a controlled magnetic field obviously when current flows through this coil it will set up a magnetic field around it and it is controllable because we can control the amount of current flowing through the coil so it is a controlled magnetic field and it is also a uniform magnetic field now what is a uniform magnetic field we know that magnetic field is a vector quantity that has got both magnitude and direction so talking about uniformity obviously we are referring to both strength and direction so inside a solenoid the field is both uniform it is having same strength and same direction throughout so a solenoid can be employed to create a uniform magnetic field in a volume of space when electric current is passed through it this term solenoid was actually first used in the year 1823 by sir andre marie ampere the si unit of current is named in his honor so he was the one who actually used this term solenoid to designate a helical coil so now the big question arises that what is the magnetic field due to a current carrying solenoid how does it look like what is the field pattern you can refer to the picture of this solenoid coming on your screen how compact it is like what is the density of copper wires how closely they have been packed i would like to tell you that more are the number of turns more compact is the solenoid more closely wound the solenoid is more stronger would be the field the strength of the solenoid the strength of the field created by a solenoid is so dependent on the number of turns now i would like to show you a setup similar to the one that is commonly employed for determining the field strength due to a current carrying solenoid before we get into the actual experiment for understanding the magnetic field now this is somewhat a replica of the experimental setup that is employed to understand the magnetic field due to a current carrying solenoid it's a very simple setup that comprises of obviously a solenoid around which you are having iron filings the solenoid has been connected to the source of current that is a battery and the circuit can be closed on or off the circuit can be switched on or off with the help of a knife switch presently it is in the off state that is the circuit is open no current is flowing through the circuit and 
just observe how the iron filings are present you have to closely observe the iron filings i am slightly zooming it so that it becomes clear to you what exactly it is going to happen when the current is switched on you can see how the iron filings have been arranged now what i will do i will turn on the switch you can see that the switch is presently in the on state current is flowing through the solenoid and now just observe the pattern now at this point i would like to ask you one question you can think about the answer for the time being can you find any similarity in the feel pattern created by this solenoid does it resemble anything you have been studying about the feel patterns created by several current carrying conductors and that too by a bar magnet so can you find out any similarity does it resemble the feel pattern due to any other material just think about an answer for the time being i will show you the experiment that is actually conducted to understand the field created by a solenoid and the factors on which the field strength depends so you are having a solenoid the ends of which have been connected to a source of current and you can see as the current starts flowing through the solenoid it is going to behave like a magnet now in order to determine the direction and of this magnetic field several compasses magnetic compasses have been kept close to the solenoid so as soon as current starts flowing through the solenoid we are going to observe that the compass needle starts deflecting now obviously this deflection is due to the field present around this solenoid you can observe the pointer of the magnetic compass that the north pole of the magnetic compass is deflected away from this particular end so obviously that particular end is going to be the north pole and the opposite the south pole like poles repel and unlike poles attract so obviously this rule helps us to determine also we need to observe the manner in which the pointer of this compasses have got deflected so this alignment of the compasses if these are plotted that will help us to determine the field pattern as it is shown in the picture so obviously the field strength of the solenoid can be determined with the help the field strength of the solenoid can be determined easily with the help of this field pattern now in order to bring about a variation in the field strength the core material is replaced a soft iron rod is inserted and once the current is switched on how the pointer of the magnetic compasses get deflected you need to observe it see the way the manner in which this deflection is taking place how fast they are moving this means obviously the strength has increased the field strength is represented by the expression b equal to mu0 ni where mu0 stands for permeability of the core material n stands for number of turns in the solenoid and i stands for current soft iron has enhanced the field strength using a soft iron core the field strength has increased many fold primarily due to more permeability of this material in the next part of the experiment the magnetic compasses have been removed the core material is removed and now the experiment is further continued with the help of some iron filings a general idea regarding the field pattern has already been obtained by studying the manner in which the pointer of the compass was getting deflected but an exact replica of the field pattern can be obtained very easily with the help of iron filings now a similar experiment was already conducted with the help of a bar magnet when some iron filings arranged themselves in a certain pattern now with the help of a solenoid the field pattern is going to be recreated after sprinkling the iron filings on the cardboard it is gently tapped so that the iron filings can align themselves in a certain pattern depending upon the field created around the solenoid the current is increased to increase the strength of the magnetic field more amount of iron filings are sprinkled and gradually you can see 
that they are aligning themselves in a recognizable pattern. The soft iron rod is again inserted inside the solenoid and how quickly the iron filings rearrange themselves. When some more iron filings are arranged, it is sprinkled, you can see that gradually with gentle tapping of the cardboard, the pattern becomes more and more recognizable. It becomes so easy to identify and correlate the created field pattern with the one that is shown in the diagram. Some more iron filings are being sprinkled and you can see that the pattern can be easily recognized. It is similar to the one that is shown in the diagram and obviously the answer to the question that I had asked a couple of time before that what is the resemblance. So, the field pattern resembles that of the magnet. So, now after going through the experiment, you can very well understand that using such a simple setup, you can create such a strong magnetic field. Like simply connecting the ends of the solenoid with the source of current helps to generate a strong magnetic field. Now, this field is similar to that of a magnet that we will be discussing sometime later. But for the time being a big question arises how to determine the polarity like for a bar magnet very easily we can identify the polarities which is the north seeking pole and which is the south seeking pole. But in case of a solenoid how to determine which end of the solenoid is going to behave like a south pole and which end is going to behave like a north pole. So that can be done with the help of an important rule very easily and that is called the clock rule. Why this rule is called the clock rule? Because in this manner we are representing the direction of current. Primarily there are two directions, clockwise and anticlockwise. The manner in which hands of a clock move, that is called the clockwise direction and obviously the reverse, the opposite direction is called anticlockwise direction. Now if a coil is held in front of you, like just imagine a solenoid is held in front of you or you are looking into a face of the coil. One coil is held in front of you and you are just observing the direction in which current is flowing in that particular face. So, if you find that the current is flowing in the clockwise direction, then that particular face of the coil is going to behave like a south magnetic pole. And if you find that the current is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction, then that face of the coil is going to behave like a north magnetic pole. Just apply this knowledge to this particular setup. You can see that a solenoid, the ends has been connected to a DC power supply and obviously it has got magnetized, it is behaving like a magnet. So very easily using the clock rule, you can identify the north pole and the south pole. One more way of remembering which end is going to behave like a north pole and which end is going to behave like a south pole is to keep an eye on the connections of the DC power supply. The end of the coil that has been connected to the positive terminal of the DC power supply behaves like a south pole. And the end of the coil that is connected to the negative terminal of the DC power supply is behaving like a north pole. So, this is also one way of remembering the polarities created in a current carrying solenoid. Now, let us study the factors affecting the magnetic field of a solenoid. There are three factors. The first one, the magnetic field around a solenoid is directly related to the current through the coil. So, if we represent the field strength by B, then it is directly proportional to the current flowing through the coil. Obviously, the magnetic field created in a solenoid is due to the current. So, stronger is the current, more is the current, stronger would be the intensity of magnetic field as it is quite clear with the picture. You can see in the first picture a 3 volt battery has been connected to the coil and in the second picture a 6 volt battery has been connected. So, obviously in the second case as more amount of current is flowing through the coil, you can see the density of field lines is also 
more so obviously a stronger field has been created in the second case owing to the amount of current more amount of current so b strength of magnetic field is directly dependent on strength of current second the magnetic field around a solenoid is directly related to the number of turns or coils around the solenoid as i was telling you earlier that more are the number of turns more is the strength of the magnetic field so strength of magnetic field is directly proportional to number of turns in the coil n stands for number of turns again with the picture you see in the first case the number of turns is less as compared to the second one so obviously the strength is more in case of the second setup even though same current is flowing through the wire in both the cases you are having three volt batteries obviously same current is flowing through the coil in both the cases but in case in the second one you are having more number of turns obviously the strength is more lastly the magnetic field around a solenoid is directly related to the material around which the wire is coiled now the material around which the wire is coiled is referred to as the core material it is referred to as the core material so the material that has been used for making this core is deciding the strength of the magnetic field as you can see in the picture in the second case the field strength is more why because in the second case the coil has been wound on a material that is having more permeability that is it gets magnetized more so the material used in the second case is a soft iron soft iron is more permeable to magnetic field than the air if we are simply using a coil then that is commonly referred to as an air core and when you talk about magnetism how good a magnet a material could be then soft iron is a much better magnetic material as compared to air so it is more permeable to magnetic field now one question might arise in your mind right now what is the meaning of this word permeable what does this statement mean permeable to magnetic field now i would like to give you the example of this word permeable in the sense in which you are using this word in biology in osmosis do you remember the term semi permeable hopefully you do you might be remembering that the the word semi permeable refers to a membrane that allows the passage of materials through it from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration isn't it in a similar sense this word permeable is being used over here permeable refers to the allowance of getting magnetized how a material the extent to which the material is getting magnetized so if you are comparing different materials the extent to which they get magnetized is going to vary obviously so soft iron gets magnetized very easily whenever an external magnetic field is present whenever there is a cause due to which this material can get magnetized that is present so the possibility of getting magnetized using a soft iron material is many times more as compared to air now permeability is generally is referred and the extent of permeability is generally symbolized or represented with the value of mu0 that is called the permeability of free space so soft iron is more permeable to magnetic field than air so as i was telling you that the field strength of a solenoid is similar to that of a bar magnet you would be studying in detail about the field strength uh, due to both of them deducing expressions for the field strength of a solenoid and a bar magnet in your senior classes actually and that's when you will get a clear idea as to how to estimate the field intensity due to both these materials that of a solenoid and that of a bar magnet and you will find that they are exactly the same right now in your class you will be understanding only about the field pattern by studying the field pattern you can get an idea that the field created due to a current carrying solenoid is exactly similar to that of a bar magnet so that's why a solenoid is referred to as an equivalent bar magnet so obviously solenoid finds an important application in building an electromagnet 
commercial electromagnets are being put to so many uses like you can imagine such huge electromagnets are being used in industries nowadays for carrying out so many functions smaller electromagnets also exist in many appliances that is commonly used in our household so very easily very simply we can create an electromagnet by using an iron nail around which a copper wire has been wound up and as soon as current starts flowing through that wire the nail gets magnetized if you are making use of a soft iron material and current is allowed to flow through it then the soft iron acquires magnetism and it is getting magnetized with the help of electric current so that's why it is called an electromagnet now once again a question may arise in your mind why a soft iron material is used why we cannot use any other material for making the core we commonly use soft iron because the retentivity of soft iron is not that high this means that it becomes strongly magnetized when current is flowing but it loses its magnetism as soon as current is switched off that is something that we always required in an electromagnet we want them to work like switches just like a switch can be put in the on and off state as per our convenience similarly the electromagnets the magnetism in it can be switched on and off with the flow of current soft iron does not retain its magnetism even when current has been switched off so it works like a temporary magnet so electromagnets are actually temporary magnets So electromagnet is a piece of iron that remains a magnet only as long as current passes through it and it loses its magnetism when current is switched off it consists of a coil wound around a soft iron core they are very strong temporary magnets and are demagnetized as soon as the current is switched off the strength depends on strength of current number of turns of the coil material forming its core obviously since an electromagnet is made up of a solenoid so the factors that is going to decide the strength of the field created by it is going to be similar as that of a solenoid so it depends on the current flowing through the setup what is the number of turns and what is the core material electromagnets can have several shapes and sizes depending on the requirement like what use they are going to be put to that is going to decide the shape of the electromagnet now one thing we should remember that instead of using soft iron if we make use of steel then it gets magnetized permanently that is it retains some of its magnetism even after current is switched off so the setup as you can see in the picture if we are making use of a steel iron a steel nail a steel material around which the copper wire has been wound up it will get magnetized permanently and that is one way of creating a permanent magnet electromagnets are being widely used nowadays in several electrical devices such as motors generators relays loudspeakers hard hard disks mri machines scientific instruments and magnetic separation equipments it does all those job as it is performed by common magnets the only difference is that we can switch them on and off electromagnets are used in electric bell they are used in industries for sorting scrap there is so many scrap materials present in big industries iron materials and in order to sort out the magnetic substances the magnetic materials from the non magnetic materials huge electromagnets as i was showing you in that picture huge electromagnets are being employed electromagnets are also used in speakers and switches they are present in so many devices that is present in our household and they are commonly put to so many uses because they are temporary magnets the strength of these magnets is in our control it is adjustable they are, they can be created in different shapes and sizes that is something that is not so easy to obtain in a permanent magnet because the strength of the permanent magnet is fixed it is not variable but electromagnets the strength can be varied as per our requirement the work just like switches so that is primarily the reason why electromagnets have got such wide application so very important question arises what is the basic difference between a temporary magnet and a permanent magnet 
Electromagnet is a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced by an electric current. The magnetic field disappears when the current is turned off. A permanent magnet is an object made from a material that is magnetized and creates its own persistent magnetic field. This means the magnetic field is retained for a long time. Electromagnet only displays magnetic properties when electric current is applied to it. It doesn't persist for a long time. It is removed as soon as the current is switched off. Talking about the strength, magnetic strength. Obviously, the strength of a permanent magnet is not adjustable, it is fixed, it persists for a long time and it depends on the material that has been used for making the magnet or rather what material it is made up of. In case of electromagnet, the strength is adjustable, we can vary the magnetic strength and its strength depends upon the current flowing through it, the number of turns of the coil and obviously the nature of the core material. We can also vary the polarities of the electromagnet by reversing the direction of current, something which is impossible in case of a permanent magnet. The polarities of a permanent magnet is fixed. Talking about the advantage, the main advantage of a permanent magnet is that we don't require any continuous supply of current if we are making use of a permanent magnet. But if we are making use of an electromagnet, obviously we have to continuously maintain a current supply because that is what is responsible for creating the magnetic field. This is all for today. Thank you.